What is up you guys? Emma here from The Urban Botanist here today to talk to you guys about, once again, moss poles. And this video is going to be a little bit different than the last video because I'm not actually going to be making a moss pole during this video. In fact, I am going to be highlighting and showing you guys a very exciting and special package that I just got in from Mossify. They are a Canadian Toronto based company. I love it. And they were nice enough to send me a moss pole. Anyway, so I thought I would do a unboxing video to show you guys what these poles are all about. <gasps> these are made by hand and I am so Super excited about the fact that they are totally bendable. So you can actually bend them to kind of fit the look that you're going for. So this one is awesome, moss pole. Comes with instructions. If you obey all the rules, you miss out on all the fun. Katherine Hepburn, a nice little fun note on the back. Okay, so I got two moss poles. I got a super extra long one and a short one. So it looks like they come in two sizes. I am going to be giving one away. So if you're not already following us on Instagram, please make sure that you do. We are going to be giving away one of these awesome moss pulls and I'm also going to show you how I actually use them. Look at this. That's like the perfect size for like a Rafita for a Tetrasperma. This guy here, you could use this for a Hoya. You could use this for a baby Monstera. Um, I, I'm so excited to, to integrate this into my pot. So it looks like there's a base, which I love. Um, for something like a moss pole, like the ones that I made in my previous videos, um, I didn't have a base. I was just kind of uh, like stabbing the moss pole into the soil and then adding the soil to, add, to give it some stability. But what's nice about this, this this base is that actually is going to add a lot more stability to the pole. So if you kind of want to picture where this is going to go, it will sit at the bottom of your pot and then your moss pole will actually come up and out of the soil itself, which is so awesome. So instructions, step one, place bottom of moss pole in an empty pot. Add rocks and then soil to compress. Insert plant, top up soil, and then bend. Pin your plant and soak your moss pole. Okay. So yeah, that was one thing that I wanted to mention was this looks like it's mainly sphagnum moss that was used. So the previous moss poles that I DIY'd and showed you guys how to make, I actually used sheet moss and I used cocoa core. So absolutely you can use sphagnum moss too. I'll show you guys how that actually looks in its loose form. And you can make moss poles out of sphagnum moss, but they take a lot more work. So to kind of show you what sphagnum moss looks like, that's this loose stuff here. Amazing, amazing moss for retaining moisture. So that's going to be great on uh, a moss pole. It's going to really help those aerial roots um, really, uh, really adapt and um, you know attach themselves to this pole. So I love. I also love the color of that kind of you know tan moss pole as opposed to that bright green that you saw on the sheet moss moss poles that I made in one of our last videos. But I'm going to dive into this guy here because oh this is super cute too. It came with a little. Um, mister and I honestly cannot have enough misters. I will use I will use and use and use this um, But these are great for actually misting your moss It's important to keep your sphagnum moss nice and moist because it actually helps your plant to really adapt in staying nice and tight and um, attached to this new structured moss pole So I'm going to kind of dive into this guy. You can see he's bent over which is so so crazy and awesome cool. Obviously it's bent like this for the purposes of packaging, but I have this beautiful Monstera plant here that I wanted to demonstrate for why and how, why for starters, why it needs a moss pole and how I'm going to introduce this moss pole to this pot. It's going to require me to repot it, which isn't the end of the world, um, because of course it's easier to start out with an empty pot where you can just 
insert your moss pole. I'm going to take it, take it completely out of its packaging so I can get a better look at the base. Look at that, super heavy, awesome base for this pole. It looks like there's some hooks here. Awesome, I was thinking I was gonna have to use my own um, wrapping material. You know, in my last video there, I, I talked about how you can use um, sort of a rubber coated wire for actually wrapping um, and attaching rather the stem of your plant to the moss pole itself. But it looks like Mossify actually provides you with some handy dandy little attachment skews. Awesome. I love it. I love it. I love it. All right. This guy is a really great size. It's going to be perfect for my Monstera, um, Monstera Deliciosa. I almost said Adonsonii. It is not an Adonsonii. Um, but if you take a look at my Monstera here, woo, she's really starting to kind of grow off and out and down. And you can see this aerial root that it's shot out to kind of provide it with support. So I'm gonna work from that. This is kind of the main branch that it's kind of growing from. So I'm going to repot this plant. I'm gonna move it a little bit more over to the, um, the side of the pot just to give a little bit of space to introduce this moss pole. And I'm basically going to be putting that moss pole right there <laughs> to provide more support and also just, you know, it's going to give it a nicer shape as it grows. And this plant uh, where it was situated was kind of growing up and against a wall. Naturally, these plants will seek out, um, you know, structural support. So by introducing a moss pole, you're kind of providing that, which is great. So first, what I'm going to do is actually straighten out this moss pole and really get an idea of, woo, how tall it is. Oh, this is awesome. And what I love about Mossify's moss pools is how you actually can add a really cool bend to it, which just, you know, aesthetically is really unique and interesting looking. I think I'm just going to keep mine straight because my monster is really going to appreciate that. And maybe I'll add a little bit of a bend in the top because it's not going to need the structural support that high up. And then I can always bend it backwards as the plant continues to grow vertically. So you can see how much easier this would be if my plant wasn't already potted and I had an empty pot. You would simply just put your, your moss pole right inside your pot and then um, repot as needed. But because I'm going to need to repot this guy, that is totally fine. I'm going to take the plant out of its pot, introduce the moss pole, and then fill it back up again. So I'm going to try and as Delicately as possible, transplant this Monstera into this pot. The amazing thing about this plant is it is actually a propagated cutting from my original big baby right here. So this was one leaf that I cut off and it's now grown two, three, four, six leaves. So amazing, I love propagating monsters. They're super, super easy to propagate. I will be making a video on how to do that in the future. But basically all I did was take a cutting right below a node, you can see right here, where um, basically a pedial is a stem that has a leaf growing off of it. So anywhere where a pedial stem meets the main stem, that's called a node, interstitial node. And you just wanna make a cutting right below that node, especially wherever you see an aerial root, that's essentially a modified root. So you can take a cutting of that and just put that directly into water and it will re-root itself and then you can repot it and boom, you have a whole new Monstera plant for yourself. Okay, so I'm going to introduce the moss pole. Look at that gonna look so good. I'm also gonna kind of raise it a bit so that it's not completely flat in the pot because I'm kind of gonna be end up losing that amount of moss. So I have a little bit of soil in the base of the pot for the base to actually sit on. Okay, I'm going to make sure that my 
Moss ball is nice and secure. Again, I do have it raised a little bit because I don't want to lose too much of that precious moss. So don't want to cover that up with soil. So I have the base kind of raised up on a bed of soil there. It will definitely be a lot more stable as I add soil. But I'm going to introduce my plant. Woo, look at those roots. Oh man. And I'm lining up the tall sort of um, reaching part of the plant with my moss pole because that's where I'm going to start attaching the monstera to the pole. Already the pole has a lot more stability. Okay. This looks awesome. I just love a monstera. They are such gorgeous statement plants and they're so easy to care for. Now I'm just going to add the remaining bit of soil that I have left to really just stabilize this plant and stabilize this moss pole. Then I'm going to actually attach this plant to the moss pole. Okay, it's starting to look really, really good. You can see how this pole is already providing structure for this plant. I'm really excited. So, Mossify actually provides these pins, which I really actually love this concept. So now what I'm going to do is just go around and just pin very, very gently the actual leaves and stem to the moss pole itself, providing further structure and support. Another method that you can use is, you know, just string. I'm actually gonna use a little bit of string for this bottom guy here because it's a little bit too big for the pins to work around. But it's really coming along nicely. So yeah, nothing fancy here. I'm just going to use a little bit of just fishing wire. Any sort of twine will work great too, but I just wanna tie this base to the moss pole, just to give it a little bit, a little bit of something extra. So the reason why these plants actually need to have a structural support system is because naturally in the wild where they grow, they're typically growing up against trees, um, you know, rocks, logs. They're uh, very much an epiphytic style growing plant where they will grow off of other organisms, which is just really cool. So essentially by introducing a moss pole, you are basically recreating their natural habitat, ultimately allowing them to grow in their most efficient, effective, most beautiful self. So that is why we are introducing a moss pole. Now, what I really love about Mossify is not only that they're using the proper moss, sphagnum moss, they provide you with a cute little spray bottle, which is awesome. And this is kind of just a great way to, instead of, if you know you don't have time to DIY, to go out and get the moss, to get the twine, to get the pole, and you just can't be bothered, this is an amazing Canadian company that you can order from. And I, I literally ordered this moss pole and it, I think I got it like three days later. The shipping was so fast. The customer service is amazing. Give them a follow, give them some love on Instagram. They are at Mossify. So we are going to be giving away one of these awesome moss poles. You can also get a discount, which I will leave the code below in the description. Um, so that you can use it at checkout and receive a special Urban Botanist discount code. Thank you so much for watching. If you'd like to learn more about how to actually make your own moss pole, that's in one of our previous videos. If you liked this video, please do like, subscribe, share it with friends. I so appreciate it and we will see you in the next video.